Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. Today we're just going to do a quick video on the use of engine driven generators on uh, single phase or three phase, specifically relating to uh, submersible pumps. Um, and this can even also apply in some cases to your other style of pumps, uh, immersible pumps. But primarily today we're talking about submersible well pumps. Um, so just be sure that. Um, you do take use when you're or take care when you're working with electricity obviously uh, as it can be dangerous so let's jump right into things <clears throat> so the two types of generators that are available on the market are going to be externally regulated generators and internally regulated generators now um, I will say that probably 85 to 90 percent of the generators out there are going to be externally regulated uh, but it is recommended that you investigate what your generator is um, to ensure that you have it properly sized for the motor that you're trying to run. So just a few bullet points here. Uh, most, as I mentioned, most are externally regulated. Use an external voltage regulator that senses the output voltage. Um, and that's essentially how they work. Voltage dips at motor startup. The regulator increases the output voltage of the generator. Uh, so you are going to have voltage dips and that's part of the reason that we have uh, when we get into the actual sizing that it will seem that the generators have to be quite large uh, in comparison to the wattage requirements of the motors. Um, and then just a little bit about internally regulated they do have an extra winding on the generator stator and the extra winding senses the output current so that's the difference there ex internal versus external so on your generator operation uh, always start the generator before the motor is started and always stop the motor before the generator is shut down and this is because uh, thrust bearing damage can occur if the motor doesn't slow down slow or at its normal speed so the power just off completely kind of as a generator runs out of fuel or is turned off as a means of turning the pump off uh, it kind of does a wind down or a slower drop in voltage and you can have some thrust bearing damage there which you definitely don't want to have. Uh, I would definitely follow the generator manufacturer's recommendations for derating uh, at higher elevations or if you're using natural gas. There is some differences there. So the table on the right here it is going to list the generator sizes based on um, your standard continuous duty rated generators and the acceptable is a 35% maximum voltage dip for starting. But uh, gen general rule of thumb is if you're using this chart and your generator is uh, sufficiently sized, you should more than be capable of starting up that motor. So generally speaking, generators must be sized to deliver at least 65% of the rate of voltage during starting to ensure adequate starting torque. So that's the important factor there. Uh, besides sizing, generator frequency is important uh, as the motor speeds, the motor speed varies with frequency. And uh, this, this has a lot to do with the affinity laws where even just a slight one or two hertz frequency change is going to potentially change the performance of your pump. And where you can run into issues here is if you're too far under, it could impact the maximum shutoff head of your pump and it might not build up sufficient pressure if you're operating off of a pressure switch or something similar. Uh, so that's gonna have a direct impact on performance. Finally, so as we talked just briefly about the chart on the right hand side, this is from the Franklin Electric AIM manual. It's a book that I've talked about quite frequently and it can be found on our website under practically any Franklin Electric product uh, because it's very useful. And so you've got your externally regulated on the left hand side of there and the internally regulated on the right hand side and you can see your sizing requirements do differ and that's where it is important to know what you've got especially when you start to get into those larger motors you can see that gap starts to really widen there uh, for example on the seven and a half horsepower uh, it'd be a 20 kilowatt externally regulated but only a 10 kilowatt internally regulated so some pretty significant differences um, so just be aware to pay attention to that and then i suppose one final note is this chart here that we we are showing applies specifically to three wire or three phase motors uh, if you're using a two wire motor you actually have to go with a 50% larger generator than the chart shows here uh, so my recommendation is uh, just get a control box and and run your three wire motor as opposed to getting a much larger generator 
So that's about it. We're going to wrap up here. If you have any questions about selecting the right size pump or motor or verifying if your generator is the right size to run what you want to run, uh, feel free to get a hold of us on some of those questions or you may have to default to the generator uh, manufacturer for some of those questions. But we're certainly willing and happy to help you out. So don't, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content and we will catch you next time.